guys, so since I've been filming a few videos in this setup recently, I'm basically sat on the floor in my bedroom with a box light behind the camera because there's no sort of window to provide me with natural light in front of the bookcase that I keep in my bedroom. I thought perhaps some of you might like to see a bit of a bookshelf tour because you're probably curious as to what's on this since you've been seeing it in so many videos and I thought it might be fun to talk about it with you. I wanted to do some sort of chatty bookshelf tour where I could just kind of sit here and go through some of the books though so this isn't going to be a traditional bookshelf tour it's just going to be a bit of a chatty one hopefully you enjoy that it's a little bit different and without further ado let's just jump straight in shall we? This bookcase I keep in my bedroom because we've pretty much filled up the bookcases in our living room, my flatmate and I, we have two bookcases in there and when I first moved to London I brought like one book with me and I've been here a year and a half, maybe a little over a year and a half now and I've managed to accumulate hundreds of books. Some I have brought down from Edinburgh so I already own them but a lot of them have just been sent to me or I acquired when I worked at Pan Macmillan or um, I've bought for myself since then so I've already got a lot of books here and I ended up needing another bookshelf. So I popped this one in my bedroom and one of the main things that's on it is all of my uni related or ancient books because I do some of my studying in here at my desk I thought it'd be good to have them handy. So I have pretty much on this top shelf mainly ancient literature. Not all of the ancient literature I own, there's still tons of it in Edinburgh but this is the stuff that I've, that I've brought here. Most of this I owned before coming to London. And then I have just regular non-fiction on this shelf. I do have some other non-fiction which I keep in the living room, but um, this is most of it. And then on the bottom shelf, what you quite, can't quite see at the moment is ancient non-fiction. So books related to studying and research and all of that jazz. So I thought I would just take you through some of the interesting things on the shelf. So at the top here, I have a selection of the Penguin 80p classics, all of which of course are ancient literature. So I have Sophocles' play Antigone here. I have a little selection of some of the fables from Aesop's fables, which I just thought was quite cute. I have some of the poems by the Latin poet Catullus. I have this speech by Plato, which is Socrates' defence. If you don't know, Socrates, although being quite a famous figure from ancient Greek history and an ancient Greek philosopher, didn't write anything down. Anything we have that was supposedly the words of Socrates is pretty much Plato. The reliability of that, however, is of course debatable. But yeah, interesting fact about Socrates if you didn't know that. And then we have a selection of poems by Sappho, who I adore. But those were just slotted in there to make room. I then have a lot of Oxford World classics. Oxford World classics tend to be my go-to for buying ancient literature because if I haven't been recommended a specific translation, I know I'm going to get something decent. So I have here in my shelves Aristophanes' Birds and other plays. This is four plays by the Greek comedian Aristophanes. I it includes Birds, Lysistrata, The Assembly Women and Wealth. The only one I haven't read in here is Wealth but I really like this selection. I think the first three are um, really, really great examples of his comedy and worth checking out. I then have selected speeches by Demosthenes. This contains, I don't even know how many speeches actually, um, by the ancient Greek rhetorician, orator, Demosthenes, who wrote court speeches for legal cases. And this does actually have one of the speeches that is in my PhD thesis in it, which is against Aristocrates, as well as a lot of his really famous ones, the ones that are seen to be kind of most important by Demosthenes, although it doesn't contain Demosthenes' funeral speech, which is, again, central to my thesis. I then have Ovid's Metamorphosis, which is a Latin epic poem all about myths of metamorphosis, so myths in which the characters transform into something else. Eratosthenes and Hyginus' Constellation Myths, which is just a selection of ancient myths and a great place to go if you're just looking to get into mythology and want a wide selection. This was in my video all about where to start with myths. The Plays and Fragments of Menander, who again wrote Greek comedian plays, although these are considered new comedy, which is a genre of comedic play that comes after the works of those like Aristophanes. He, he says Theogony and Works and Days, which is sort of the myth of the beginning of the universe, the gods and the humans. Apollodorus is the library of Greek mythology, which is my go-to recommendation for people who are looking to read myths because it is just loads of basically short stories about myths from antiquity. 
and um, again was featured in that video I mentioned. Pindar the Complete Odes, again this one contains lots of myths but also stories about Olympic victors and different heroes and people like that. One of my favourite books from antiquity which is Achilles Tatius' Lucipe and Clytophon, this is an ancient Greek novel. I actually do have Daphnis and Chloe by Longus on this bookcase but it's being lent to somebody at the moment and that's my favourite piece of ancient Greek literature of all time but this is definitely up there. I did a whole video on the ancient Greek novel again if you're interested in the genre I will link it down below but I love them. I have another one of my favourites which is Apollonius of Rhodes's Argonautica or Jason and the Golden Fleece as you can see quite heavily tabbed there's also a lot of scribbling in here I love this book it's just brilliant it tells the story of Jason and Medea and the Golden Fleece and the Argonauts and all of those characters. Aristotle's The Art of Rhetoric which is my newest acquisition to this this shelf actually which is all about what the title says the art of writing rhetoric some more ancient Greek plays we have a selection of four plays by Euripides this includes Medea, Hippolytus, Electra and Helen I've read all of these I think I always forget whether I've read Euripides or Sophocles's Electra so I won't swear to you I've read all four of these but again great selection and then an older edition of some more Euripides plays this one includes Alcestes, Heracles, Children of Heracles and Cyclops. The Cyclops isn't actually a tragedy it's a satyr play so when ancient Greek tragedies were performed with during religious festival which is when they were always performed in ancient Greece they were performed in trilogies you, you would get three tragic plays followed by a satyr play which was a comedy play and the Cyclops is the only satyr play from ancient Greece that has survived and I haven't read it but I really really need to. I then have some penguins so I'll bring these down for you. I have Ovid's Heroids which are letters written by Ovid from one character of mythology to another character of mythology. We do of course have a copy of Homer's Odyssey. I have three copies of Homer's Odyssey here on this bookcase. I actually own another one which is in Edinburgh. What can I say? I then have the three Theban plays by Sophocles which are Antigone, Oedipus the King and Oedipus at Colonus. Herodotus's Histories which is Herodotus writing about the Greek and Persians relationship with one another throughout history and Letters from a Stoic by Seneca which I haven't read either I only bought this one last year because I really want to read some Seneca despite not being a Roman historian and uh, never having read any Seneca before I, it's, he's an author that I would like to have read and, and judge his work for myself I then have my edition of the Iliad by Homer this is the edition that was recommended to me when I was at university by a lecturer for a course it's translated by Richmond Lattimore and it does read very nicely um, so this is the one I've had a long time for that but I've got one edition of the Iliad I don't like it as much to be fair we then have Aeschylus's Oresteia which is three plays by Aeschylus and is actually the only complete trilogy that survives from ancient Greece like I mentioned they were always performed in trilogy but this is the only complete one that survived. I have more Euripides plays I know. This one includes Andromache, Hecuba the Suppliant Women and Electra. Plato's Republic which is Plato's version of an idealised society um, depending on how seriously you take it. It's definitely an interesting philosophical read although I wouldn't want to live there. And then we have the politics and the constitution of Athens who in this instance is writing about the best forms of government according to him and how they all uh, function and sort of about how human nature fits in to these different systems of government and what the system of government is in Athens. I then have the Encomnium of Helen by Gorgias. I have the History of the Peloponnesian War by Thucydides and more plays about Euripides. This includes 10 plays. We have how many in here? My dad brought me back this edition from Harvard when he was visiting Boston with my mum. It has Alcestes, Hippolytus, Ion, Electra, Iphigenia, Aeolus, Iphigenia amongst the Taurians, Medea, the Bacchae, the Trojan women and the Cyclops. I then have some books that are either my mum's or my dad's. So I have A Great Love by Alexandra Kollontai, which is not ancient. This is just the little section that I've put them in in this bookcase. This is a book that my mum recommended to me. This is her copy of it and I want to read this year. I have Medea by Liz Lockhead, which is a retelling of the Medea myth by the Scottish playwright. And then some books of my dad's. This is my dad's copy of some of the plays and poems of Percy Shelley. 
his edition of The Corn King and The Spring Queen by Naomi Mitchison and his edition of The Odyssey which is the first copy of The Odyssey I ever read and has an inscription in it to me from my dad which I think it's probably one of the only things I have with his handwriting in them that's like expressly directed to me other than say like a birthday card so this is very special to me. I genuinely did not think this video was going to end up being as long as I think it is but I've talked about all of the books in more detail than I also anticipated <laughs> so I'm not going to talk as much about all of the books on this shelf because you've probably seen these more in other videos but we have Dear Eja Welly, A Feminist Manifesto and 15 Suggestions by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, Women and Power, A Manifesto by Mary Beard, Making the Future and Because We Say So by Noam Chomsky, The Joy of Tax by Richard Murphy, How a Fair Tax System Can Create a Better Society, and then two more books that belong to my dad, The Elephant's Journey by Jose Saramago, and then also a non-fiction book called Nkrumah and the Ghana Revolution by C.L.R. James. My dad specialised in African history when he was doing his history degree, so um, this was a book he recommended to me. The Book of Barely Imagined Beings, a 21st century beastery by Caspar Henderson. Ayuade on Ayuade, a cinematic odyssey by Richard Ayuade. A Rebel's Guide to Rosa Luxemburg. We Should All Be Feminist by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Classical Mythology, a very short introduction by Helen Morales. I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. Refugee Tales. Dismembered. How the Attack on the State Harms Us All by Polly Toynbee and David Walker. Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paolo Friere. They Can't Kill Us All by Wesley Lowry. Bad News by Anjan Sudaram. Prison Gate, The Shocking State of Britain's Prisons and the Need for Visionary Change by David Ramsbotham. Leftover Women, The Resurgence of Gender Inequality in China by Lita Hong Fincher. Asata, an autobiography by Asata Shakur. These three lovely editions are all from the Virago Radical Thinkers series and I just think they're gorgeous. I have Women Resistance and Revolution, A History of Women and the Revolution in Modern World by Sheila Rowbotham. They're all republications of sort of classic radical political literature. Frames of War, When Is Life Grievable by Judith Butler. And If They Come in the Morning, Voices of Resistance by Angela Y. Davis. This one's about prisons and it's a collection of essays by different authors. This one is about war and this one, well this title is pretty self-explanatory on this one. We have The New Poverty by Stephen Armstrong, The Essential Rosa Luxemburg which includes two of her writings, Reform or Revolution and The Mass Strike, Why the Dalai Lama is a Socialist by Terry Gibbs, Angry White People Coming Face to Face with the British Far Right which is one of the most terrifying book covers I've ever seen. You don't know this but I keep having to delete stuff off my memory card, um, Virgin Envy which is a collection of essays all about virginity, the cultural and significance of the hymen is the subtitle and they're all by different authors. Capitalist Realism, Is There No Alternative by Mark Fisher. Romaphobia, The Last Acceptable Form of Racism by Aidan McGarry. And the last two for that shelf are The Good Immigrant, Essays by a Variety of Different People and edited by Nikesh Shukla and Sister Outsider, Essays and Speeches by Audre Lorde. Okay, so now for the last shelf which are predominantly ancient history non-fiction. There are a few other random bits and pieces in there. In fact, the first book down here that I can see is Greek Stories, a GCSE reader, which is just um, sort of passages of Greek text with aids to translate them. We then have a lot of stuff on similar themes and you'll pick up on it as we go I think. We have Women in Athenian Law and Life by Roger Just. Before Sexuality, The Construction of Erotic Experience in the Ancient Greek World which is a collection of essays by different scholars. I've had this one for such a long time I think since my undergraduate dissertation and it's still relevant to me and I managed to pick up second hand originally so that was pretty good. Rape in Antiquity, Sexual Violence in the Greek and Roman World, edited by Susan DC and Karen F. Pierce. Susan DC is actually one of my uh, PhD supervisors. More stuff for doing Greek translations, this is a copy of Lucian's The Ass with like vocabulary and bits of grammar to help you read it all the way through in Ancient Greek. Demosthenes of Athens and the Fall of Classical Greece by Ian Worthington. Approaches to Greek Myth edited by Lowell Edmonds, again this one's a collection of essays. My dad actually bought me the next book and that's Gender, Antiquity and Its Legacy by Brooke Holmes and then in the same series I bought Sex, Antiquity and Its Legacy by Daniel Orells. These are by Taurus and they're just quite nice little 
books about both these topics in antiquity and um, but kind of also how that's continued um, up into the modern day kind of their receptions and things like that. This book which I bought back for a course I did in fourth year of university called Athenian Law and Economy and has proved eternally useful since then and that's The Law in Classical Athens by Douglas M. McDowell. If you want a good introduction to ancient law, well ancient Greek law from Athens, this is the one. Another book that's a great introduction to a topic is Goddesses, Whores, Wives and Slaves, Women in Classical Antiquity by Sarah B. Pomeroy. I think I featured this one in my ancient history books to begin your journey with, but again, excellent place to read. The Amazons, Lives and Legends of Warrior Women Across the Ancient World by Adrian Mayer. Revenge in Athenian Culture by Fiona McCarty. Fiona McCarty is also one of my PhD supervisors. <laughs> Feminist Approaches to Mythology, which I haven't actually read in its entirety, but I need to read more of. It's not solely focused on classical myth either but I thought it was a really fun concept when I saw this second hand. It's edited by Caroline Larrington. Athenian funeral orations which is actually not ancient non-fiction really, it's a collection of all six of the Athenian funeral orations that have survived to some extent or another from antiquity and I've spilt water on this because I carry it around most days because it's really important to my thesis. So it's a bit beaten up. This is one of the first proper ancient history books I ever got and it is The Class Struggle in the Ancient Greek World by G.E.M. Deste Qua. This is actually a pretty important piece of scholarship as well. This was a present from uh, Linda who is like my aunt. She's a good friend of my mum and I. Uh, she bought this for me when I got in to do my undergrad at Edinburgh University and she did a lot of research and looked for books that were important to the study of classics and had made a big impact on um, that academic world and bought me this as a gift and it was such such an, such a kind gift of her and it has proved very useful as the years have gone on. Now for the books that were stacked here that you couldn't see that I've pulled out. The first one's actually not ancient but it just didn't fit anywhere else and it's Red Rosa by Kate Evans. This is a graphic novel biography of Rosa Luxemburg. We then have Epidactic Rhetoric Questioning the Stakes of Ancient Praise by Laurent Pernault. Women's Power, Man's Game, Essays on Classical Antiquity. The Odyssey, my third copy for this bookcase. <laughs> this one is translated by Emily Wilson. This one I've talked about recently because it was such a big deal. It's the first published translation into English of Homer's Odyssey by a woman and I'm so excited to read this because I wanted to do a reread of the Odyssey this year anyway so it will be great fun to have um, such a pivotal new translation to check out. I also have Mythos by Stephen Fry which are Stephen Fry's retellings of ancient Greek myths uh, somewhat in the vein of people like uh, Robert Graves. I haven't gotten around to this one yet but I'm really looking forward to it. Anything that makes antiquity more accessible I give an A+. So then we have Women at War in the Classical World by Paul Crystal. Athanasi Book 2, An Introduction to Ancient Greek. This is the uh, second part. I used these to do Ancient Greek during my Masters. This is the one we used during the second term. It's the more advanced one so I've got it around for practice. And then lastly we have Stealing Helen. The Myth of the Abducted Wife in Comparative Perspective by Lowell Edmonds, again, who edited another book that I've shown you in this video. Those are all the books that I have in this bookcase, however, apart from my little Virginia Woolf's editions up here, and oh, almost forgot some more ancient Greek plays. This is another copy of Aeschylus' Oristia, but this is the Loeb edition, which contains both the ancient Greek and the English. I hope you enjoy this slightly different format for a bookcase tour. I just figured since it was such a small bookcase, I could sit here and talk to you face to face through the books. I know I haven't gone into tons of detail about everything because as I went on I realised that that would just take hours of my life that I don't have right now and would probably be unwatchable. I do hope you have enjoyed this video however and found it interesting. If you want to ask about more details of any of the books I've mentioned then please do leave them down below and until next time guys happy reading. I'll see you all again soon. Bye!